Good morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning. This is a real unusual setup for me. Uh, as I was telling the gentleman this morning, it's uh, the first time that I have been in the room here and tried to speak to you. I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to be here this morning. I'm thankful for the opportunity to talk to you this morning. I would hope that you would follow along with me today and that if you could, if you make notes or that you would remember if I misspeak or say something that you disagree with, that you might visit with me later about it, either by phone or somehow let me know if I've messed up. I would, I would count you my friend if you'd let me know. This past year, 2020, was a tough year. For most of us, it changed our lives. The pandemic caused us to behave differently than probably we ever have before. It made some of us sick. It made all of us have to think about where we were going, who we were around. It even took the lives of some of the people that we know and love, some of it directly and some of it indirectly. And I think that most of us are pretty happy to put 2020 behind us. But what can we learn from a year like 2020? There is probably a lot of lessons that we could learn. I would imagine patience is one of them. Remembering to count our blessings might be another. But the one that I would like to visit with you about this morning, when I was thinking back over the past year, the comparison of about how I dealt with my spiritual well-being versus my physical well-being. This past year, we have been really conscious of trying to protect ourselves from being exposed to the virus and to trying to keep ourselves and people we love from getting sick. And I'd like to visit with you this morning about some similarities that that I have seen between those two, between our physical well-being and our spiritual well-being. If you would, if you want to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33, it says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts, corrupts good character. We understand that physically we can get sick by who we're around. Have we paid as much attention this past year that we could end up causing ourselves some spiritual problems and possibly cause ourselves to be spiritually sick by who we were around, what company that we kept? You know, in our area, we have the old adage, if you run with the dogs, you get the fleas. And this verse tells us, don't think that you're not going to end up being affected by being around people that are bad. Bad company is going to cause you to be exposed to, to things that may tempt you to be bad. So have you been careful about that? Proverbs 22, 24, and 25 is the next verse if you'd like to turn there. In Proverbs 22, verse 24 and 25, it gives another warning. It says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. And I'm reading most of this from the King James uh, this morning, but the language here, when it says a snare to thy soul, it means it could be something that could happen. When you snare an animal, you catch them unaware. The people that you run around with, if you run around with somebody that's angry all the time, that's wanting to fight, that's wanting to quarrel, that's wanting to end, they're just, they just seem like they're into an argument all the time. You could end up learning their ways and you could end up without realizing it becoming just like them. Psalm 119 and 115 gives us another one. It says, Away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commands of God. 
I think most of us realize that when you are trying to behave and you're trying to follow the commands of God and you are around people that could care less about God and that don't want to follow his commands, it can cause you trouble. So this past year, when you're looking back at it, you were careful about who you were around if you thought that they might end up causing you to be sick physically. Was you careful about staying away from things and people that might end up causing you to have your soul troubled? The next thing that I want to visit with you about is what did we do this past year to try to limit our exposure to the virus? Most of us was pretty conscious of this, and we still are going into this year. But we did several things, almost all of us did, and we're continuing to do them. One of the things that we did was we wore a mask. Now, most of us, when we started off doing this, this was really strange. And I mean, it was for me, I'll be honest with you, I don't, uh, I don't like the mask. It, uh, it, it was hard for me to, to get accustomed to wearing it had trouble breathing through it. Uh, but after days and weeks and months of doing it, now it's just it's just like putting on your clothes in the morning. But we were doing this to protect others from what was coming out of our mouths. Some people may have thought they were protecting themselves from what was going to come into their mouths, but the major thing was for you to try to protect other people from what was coming out of your mouth. Let's look at Ephesians 4 and 29. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. This past year, you was real careful about maybe not exposing people to the virus, especially if you were quarantined. I mean, uh, you wore your mask all the time. Was you careful about how you spoke to people? When you talked to people over the phone or when you visited with your, the people that you did interact with, which has been limited, were you careful about how you visited with them? Did you watch what was coming out of your mouth? Another thing that we did and we continue to do, we washed our hands. I mean, I was a hand washer before this, but then after this started, it, it just, it was magnified. We washed our hands, we used hand sanitizer, we wore gloves, and we was trying to be careful about what we touched, about what we were handling, because we knew that it was possible that things that we touched could harm us. In James chapter 4 and verse 8, the verse says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We worked real hard about keeping our hands physically clean. Were we careful about spiritually realizing that what we handle, and what I mean by that is, Everything that you do in your daily lives, everything that you, how you conduct your daily lives, were we careful about trying to keep ourselves unspotted from the world? Were we careful about our, our exposure to things that might contaminate us uh, spiritually? The second part of that verse, it says, Purify your hearts, you double minded. This is something that uh, doesn't really go along with the hand washing, but it's talking about purifying our hearts. Where we, some of us have heart problems, y'all, and that's a whole other that's a whole other lesson. But were we careful about protecting our hearts? Were we were we studying? Were we trying to put the right things into our minds that our uh, that our hearts would be right with God? That we would end up trying to make sure that we. Uh, we were filled with the things that we needed to, to to make our heart right with God? 
or was we separated like a double-minded person? Was we trying to live in the world and in the church at the same time? Did we have one foot on one side of the fence and one on the other side? Another thing that we have all been doing, we've been trying to keep a safe distance from one another. And this is probably one of the hardest for most of us because most of us like to be around people. And we like to hug each other, like to shake hands. We like to visit with each other. I ended up being exposed knowingly uh, that I know about twice to somebody that was infected with COVID. And I should have said this before I started. I am in no way trying to, uh, to point a finger at someone and saying that you should have been doing something different and, and you wouldn't have got sick or you wouldn't have made somebody... That's, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to make us think of the comparison between these two things. But I uh, was at work, was exposed by a co-worker, and I had to quarantine. I ended up uh, a little later on going in, uh, on a business trip, was with another co-worker uh, in his vehicle for about 15, 20 minutes, and he went back home, he got diagnosed with COVID, I had to quarantine again. I let my guard down. I didn't think that it was gonna be one of these deals to where that, you know, it wasn't gonna bother me. I just let my guard down. And I had to quarantine. Luckily for me, very fortunate for me, I was blessed that I didn't end up testing positive. And I didn't get sick either time. So I've been very fortunate. But during these quarantines, I felt like maybe if you look at the, in Leviticus in chapter 13, when it's talking to, uh, when it's talking about how that the priest dealt with lepers, and how that they uh, were supposed to cover their upper lip, and that you know I thought, well, I'm covering myself with this mask all the time, anyways. But it made me think, I'm 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 like one of these lepers almost. I should be going around town. I've been exposed. I've been exposed instead of I'm unclean. It. Uh, it really, it made me nervous that I might make someone else sick. Are we that concerned about that, how we might end up causing someone else to be tempted by sin? Are we watchful about that? Do we realize that the things that we say and that we do when we interact with people, that we, if we're not careful, if we don't fight against sin, and try to keep it away from us. That we could cause other people trouble the same way it could cause us trouble. James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. How many of us have resisted the devil the way we have resisted COVID this past year? Amen. Have we fought against him like we have fought against COVID? Think about that. Now think about what I just said. How many of us let our guard down? Just we, we fought and we got tired and was like, man, I just got to have a break. I got to do something. I got to see somebody. I've got to take this mask off and visit with somebody. I got to hug some. And then you get exposed. Sin is very similar to that. One of the other things that I think that happened, and it, I heard someone echo this this morning. A lot of us, and I hope that you all are not in this camp now. A lot of us were in denial about this whole pandemic thing. We didn't think it was real. Some of you all might still think it's not real. My uncle Bert was the first person in our family that ended up catching the, the virus. He didn't believe it was real. He had told me before this, before he caught it, that he didn't think it was real. He thought it was all made up. When I called to check on him, and he was very sick, he and his wife both had caught it, he says, Nephew, I made fun of people that was wearing a mask. 
said, I made fun of people that believed this stuff. He said, I didn't believe it. Thought it was all just a scam. He said, believe me, nephew, it's real. Is that the way we are with sin? Do we have to end up being in denial that we can be affected by it until it affects us or somebody close to us to where that we see the effects of sin? Are we going around saying, don't bother me? I can go here and do this. I can go there and be around these people. It won't bother me. They're drinking, they're cussing, they're fighting, they're gambling, they're uh, fornication, it, you know, whatever it is. It won't bother me. Until it does. Sin is real. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. This is a very applicable verse, I believe, probably for both our physical bodies and our spiritual bodies. But this is talking about our spiritual bodies. There's a lot of people didn't believe COVID was real and ended up costing them their lives or causing them to end up infect somebody else that cost them their lives. How many people's affected by sin because of you? Because something you did do or something you didn't do. How many times have you let yourself be exposed to it and then you've been affected by it? Just because you thought it wasn't going to bother you, seemed right to you, seemed okay to you. This verse is a good warning. It tells us you might think you got it all figured out, but it could end up costing you life, not just physically, which is bad, but spiritually, which is horrible which is eternal. One of the other things that we did was we checked our temperatures. I mean, I can't remember a time in my life I've ever checked my temperature as much as uh, what I have this past year. I'd say most of you all are the same way. And most of us understand that 98.6 is the body temperature that is considered normal for us. And we've tried to make sure that that little reading came up 98.6 or close to it because we were concerned. We knew that if that was higher than that, just a little bit, might be a concern that we might be infected with the virus. How many times did you check your spiritual temperature? temp of your spiritual body how many times did you check yourself to see where you was at how you was doing revelations 3 and 14 through 3 16 says and unto the angel of the church of the laodiceans write these things saith the amen the faithful and the true witness the beginning of the creation of god i know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Some of the translations here for that word spew yeah, is spit or vomit. It's kind of putting the picture in your mind. Have you ever picked up something to eat or drink, put it in your mouth, expecting to get what the right temp was supposed to be or the right consistency was supposed to be. And when it hits your tongue, you were like, I got to get this out of my mouth. Or either if you tried to swallow it, it made you want to get rid of it. It made you want to regurgitate. This verse or this group of verses is telling us that a wishy-washy, lukewarm Christian is this is how God views us. If we are so inconsistent, if we are a give it or take it Christian, we could come or we could go, we, you know, we could participate, we could not, we could behave or we could not, we, we could follow God or we could not. 
It's disgusting to God. Just like something that would make you want to vomit. So we go through all these things this past year. We wear our mask. We wash our hands. We try to keep our distance. We check our temperatures. When we finally figure out that we're physically sick, what do we do? Well, most of us, we end up trying to go to a doctor. Some of us hard-headed ones, we might wait a long time before we say that we are sick, before we go to the doctor. And then somebody else might have to take us to the doctor because we didn't go when we were able to take ourselves. What do you do when you're spiritually sick? When you've checked your spiritual temperature and you've looked at yourself and you say, I know that I'm not right. I know that the, I, you know it and you know you can check your own temp, okay? You know and God knows. You might fool everybody else. You might tell everybody that you're okay and you might look okay. You might not have any symptoms at all on the surface. But you know and God knows. What are you going to do? Well, Matthew 9, 12 says you can go see the great physician. Matthew 9 and 12 says, But when Jesus heard that, he said that unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus came to die for sinners. He came and sacrificed himself on the cross that we might have a cure for sin. Okay? A lot of people right now, you're thinking about uh, your physical bodies. You're thinking about Hey, there's a vaccine out here, and that is great news. And I would encourage you that you might consider looking at the, uh, the opportunities to partake of that. If we were given the vaccine up here at the door, and I told you after this message that you could come up here and get the vaccine, there'd probably be quite a few of you who'd come up here and get it. Even though it's got a 95 point something or another percentage rate, some of you might say, ah, wait, you know, it only works 95% of the time. The cure for sin that Jesus made available to us works 100% of the time. Amen. It never fails, it will always produce what He planned for it to do, which is forgiveness of our sins. Acts 8 and 36 and 38 says, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? We have water in this building, y'all. If you're willing to follow the plan of salvation, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you're willing to confess that, you're ready to repent of your sins, we have water in here that we can baptize you and you will be free of sin. Absolutely 100% guaranteed. Regardless of how bad you got it or how little of it that you think you have. If you've never been baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, you can get rid of them today. Not a 95% chance, 100%. Guaranteed. Some of you that are here, you're saying, well, I've been baptized, but I'm feeling sick again. I've allowed sin to find its way back into my life. Y'all may know some folks this past year or that you've read or you've seen that have had the virus multiple times. They've been exposed multiple times and their bodies were not able to fight it off and they got sick multiple times. After you're baptized for the forgiveness of sins, Satan will still be after you. He'll still be trying to tempt you. 
he'll still be trying to cause you to sin. If you've allowed that to happen, Acts 8 and 22 says, Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven. Most of us realize this is from the story of Simon the sorcerer and how that he wanted to buy the ability to, uh, to lay on hands the gift to the Holy Spirit. Now, if you've allowed yourself to end up being affected by sin after you have given yourself to God through baptism, it's an opportunity. 1 John 2 and 1 says, My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So we not only have Jesus the great physician, we have Jesus the advocate that will intervene for us if we ask him to. When we sin as Christians and we go to him and ask for that forgiveness through him, God's going to listen. And if we repent of those sins, we'll be forgiven of them. As I said, 2020 has been a tough year. We look forward to 2021 and hope that the things that happened this year will, will be better. I would hope that you would consider spiritually what you might do to make 2021 better spiritually, not just physically would ask that you would consider this at this time. As I said earlier, if you knew we were given the vaccine, how many of you would jump out of your vehicle? You wouldn't even wait to pull up here. You'd jump out of your vehicle wanting to be first in line. Those of you that are here today that have never been baptized for forgiveness of your sins, what hinders you? Why don't you get rid of it? Those of you that have been baptized, but you know that there's something that you need to make right with God, do it. Don't put it off. Take care of it. If there is anything that we can help you with this morning, we'd ask that you'd make it known. You can come up to the building. Uh, you can flash your lights. You can honk your horns. You Whatever you need to do. If you, if you feel that you need to wait until after services, Wait until everybody leaves and come up here. Whatever you need to do, make it known so that we can help you with it this morning as we sing our closing song.